it is the start of the school holidays, which can only mean one thing, a new release from Lindsay Kelk. Welcome to a book review and event vlog. Welcome back, or if you are new here, welcome. My name is Katrina and I make bookish content here on this channel every week and then movie reviews at the weekend. However, today is um, an important day because we have a new Lindsay Kelp book and we have a new, oh, are you ready? Oh, signed Lindsay Kelp book. Yes, I did have a post-it with my name, but we didn't really need it. Yes, I ended up going to two Lindsay Kelk events and so there will be event vlog footage at the end, but I'm going to do my book review for you first. And of course, if you love the sound of this, the link to order will be in the description box below. I have a whole Lindsay Kelk playlist, so I will leave that linked up above. And if you did come here for a movie review, I have a very important like movie versus movie review thing coming your way because I'm going to watch three movies tomorrow and bring you my thoughts here. So watch this space around about Tuesday, Wednesday, they will be coming your way. So new Lindsay Kelk is a new standalone Lindsay Kelk. Very, very exciting. The premise of this one follows Phoebe traveling to LA to go and stay with her sister. However, her sister picks her up from the airport and then is like, mm, I need to go away for work for a couple of days will you be okay on your own? So we have Phoebe in this house in LA, as we can see on this gorgeous, gorgeous cover, um, alone and just not knowing what to do. And in true Lindsay Kelk style, we have a couple of characters who drop into her life in a comedic slash dramatic slash unexpected way. But when you're reading a Lindsay Kelk, you do expect these characters to pop in, you know, just randomly turn up climbing over fences, waking you up when you don't expect it, that kind of thing. Um, so this book, as an always with a Lindsay Kelp book, was just so much fun from start to finish, like literally from the first page to the last page. It was so much fun. It was so entertaining. It was so involving and inviting and just familiar as a Lindsay Kelp novel. However, if you have never read a Lindsay Kelk novel before, this is a great place to start because it just has a bit of everything. With a Lindsay Kelk novel, you get some romance, yes. You get some laughter, absolutely yes. You get some like really sort of British humour, but British humour that works on both sides of the Atlantic. And then you also get this incredible like heart and soul and just book that you can really sink yourself into. Sit back and relax and just get involved with the book. But then you also have these amazing friendships, female friendships, mixed gender friendships, family friendships as well. And that is what I love so much about a Lindsay Kelp book is that it feels real. It feels real life, but it feels enough escapism that you can jump into Phoebe's world or Angela's world or whoever's world in a Lindsay Kelp novel and just be absorbed. But it feels enough like real life that everything's believable, everything's relatable, and everybody will be able to find something that they can connect with in this book. Um, it was just great to go to LA again as well. Now I, funnily enough, said this to someone as I was reading the book and then went to the event vlog and Lindsay Kelp basically said the same thing. But the last LA set novel that um, Lindsay Kelp wrote was I Heart Hollywood. And I Heart Hollywood didn't sort of show LA slash Hollywood in its best light. And this was when Lindsay was still living in New York. And obviously you've got that whole East Coast, West Coast thing. And this felt a lot more like a love letter to LA. And I, I can't remember if I wrote it in my written review, which is on my blog, which is always linked in the description box. But you could really tell that this novel was written about LA by someone who lives in LA. The fact that this author managed to get her sort of favourite restaurant in here and sort of favourite place to go hiking in here. 
it just felt really real and if you've only gone and kind of done the touristy things in LA or experienced LA traffic or heaven forbid just flown into LAX then this book gives you kind of a different side of LA and gives you more kind of local knowledge and different neighborhoods and quieter beaches and better hikes and ways to avoid the traffic if there is such a thing at certain times of the day. Um, Although Phoebe is our main character and she's a little bit broken when we meet her at the beginning of the book and we're not really sure why. We know there's been a bit of a bad breakup but we don't know the extent to the breakup. Um, however, one of the characters that jumps into um, Phoebe's life unexpectedly is Belle. Is she named after Lindsay Kelt's cat? I don't know. Um, but <laughs> uh, Belle kind of jumps into Phoebe's life the same way if you are a fan of the I Heart series by Lindsay Kelk, it's just behind me here and I have a whole read-along, read-a-thon review of the entire series. If you want to go and watch that, I'll leave it linked up above. But um, Jenny jumps into Angela's life and sort of takes her and shows her New York and Belle takes Phoebe and shows her some of LA and I really, really like Belle because um, this is where the kind of inspiration behind the book comes in because this book was inspired by the story of um, Cyrano and how he doesn't think that he's good enough for this person that he's pursuing because of his big nose and so um, writes letters for someone else to pursue her and so we kind of have Belle here who just doesn't think she's good enough for it anything as well as Phoebe who doesn't think she, that she's good enough for anything and so we've got both these characters here who have this kind of slight romantic interest in um, Phoebe's sister's neighbour Wren who is kind of vegan and outdoorsy and like carpentry and ooh, that whole picture of a male character and they have a very very fun meet cute it's one of my favourite meet cutes of a Lindsay Kelk novel I really like this um, and kind of jumping over fences really does um, feature quite heavily in this book. But this is, you know, it is involved in their meet cute. Um, but I just loved Belle as a character. And I really, really hope that she might feature in another Lindsay Kelp novel. The same way that we sometimes get Easter eggs pop up or the way Jenny Lopez got her own novella or two. Um you know, just putting that out there, I would like to read more from Belle. Um, and then the other thing that I just really loved about the book, I know I've sort of already mentioned it, but the different locations that we got to travel to with these characters, it was really fun going to like the, um, the Hollywood graveyard that you kind of get to see in all the films, but seeing it from somebody's point of view who hasn't really heard of it being like okay we're gonna go on a picnic in a graveyard what's all this about um and linking in with that sort of old hollywood vibe you know they they see the griffith observatory they see the hollywood sign they see the stars cemetery um but linking in with that we have a kind of like not washed up but former movie star who has all the gossip i'm thinking like the hollywood series on netflix kind of movie star sunset boulevard movie star going on and um she sort of forms a friendship with phoebe as well and i really enjoyed the kind of anti hollywood but old hollywood vibe that she brought to the book because she doesn't agree with all the development that's going on in la right now she doesn't agree with people moving into these houses that were owned or built by people that she used to work with, by the neighbourhood that she knew, tearing them down and building up something bigger and better in their mind. Um, and I just absolutely loved getting to meet Myrna. I laughed out loud, very much so. I um, read this in Kindle form and highlighted a load of one-liners. One of my favourite, and I'll have to look down and read this, being, and do you know <laughs> they don't sell bird's eye potato waffles in America? No wonder there's so much political unrest. I just love that that line. Um, and there are other like really classic lines in here. I do always find myself highlighting some classic one-liners in um, Lindsay Kelk novel. There is also a cameo from a character from On a Night Like This 
in here and there are of course Taylor Swift references and of course some like classic British references in there although there's no that'll do pig that'll do I, I can I can forgive the fact that we're blaming the political unrest on the lack of bird's eye potato waffles um so absolutely recommend this book if you are thinking of um shopping for your summer holiday reading absolutely put this one into your real or virtual basket as i say it will be linked in the description box and i went to not one but two lindsay kelk events i went to one event that i unfortunately couldn't stay to get my book signed and so i then also went to a signing i started the queue for the signing um that was literally 20 minutes from my house how amazing is that um the other one was slightly further from my house but i will always travel for a lindsay kelk event i've traveled to all parts of the country for Lindsay Kelk events previously um and so yes I have some footage from that first event and then I will end with my pictures from my signing event and um yes do check out the Lindsay Kelk playlist I will leave it in the end screen if you are leaving me here make sure you subscribe for more Lindsay Kelk goodness and more summer reading recommendations because I do have more coming your way that movie review will be coming your way very very soon it's a big weekend for movies so make sure you are subscribed and hit that notification bell if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you are carrying on give it a thumbs up and um yes enjoy the vlog footage thank you so much for watching my review yes because now I've got to do another one. Everything <laughs> <laughs> before publication day, it's all right, isn't it? Because it's mm -hmm. like, well, it's, it's coming, and then now I'm behind because I haven't done the next one. But yay for this one! <laughs> <laughs> it's be all right. Over a long period of time, if you don't mind. <laughs> so, just make it last more than half an hour. That'd be great. I don't know how you do it, but you do it every single well, time. Well, they haven't read it yet, so like, we don't know if we have. <laughs> like, I hope I have. You've read it. Um, I, I don't know. Um, how do you do your job, Lindsay? You know the answer to this, because you've done it. Uh, I wanted to write a rom-com about LA. So a lot of we do is set in LA, and I live in LA. And I've lived there for eight years, and I hadn't written a book set in LA for a very long time. I did a very long time ago, I wrote I Hot Hollywood. Check the mail. I didn't live there then, and I did not especially enjoy LA. And I'm getting nods from Jane, who, like, who doesn't especially. I get it. Um, so that definitely came in that, out in that book that I was not its favorite person. And then after I moved there, you sort of find a new version of LA. Like the LA that you, I live in is not the LA that I visited when I went on a holiday, and it's not the LA that you see on TV. It's it's such a strange city there's all these little tiny neighborhoods and little tiny places and you kind of need someone to show you around uh, and to clue you in because otherwise you just never find it and you just never leave your home uh, which also is appealing um, <laughs> but yeah I really wanted to write that version of LA into a story so I knew that that was going to be my setting um, and then the plot itself without giving away any spoilers um, was inspired by Cyrano so the idea of Cyrano de Bergerac couldn't... It, this is where it gets shady, I have to keep summarising it. I'm like, so he's in love with his cousin, um, <laughs> which was okay at the time. Yeah. Uh, his Dutch cousin. Um, but he's in love with his cousin and he doesn't think he can ask her out, not because she's his cousin, but because he's got a big nose. So <laughs> I, it was the style at the time. Uh, so he helps this other hot guy who's totally in love with her win her heart by writing love letters on this guy's behalf is a very short and terrible version of what happens in Cyrano. Um, and it made me think about the reason he thought he couldn't ask her out was because he considered himself to have a deformity because he had a big nose. Um, and I wondered what that would look like if we gender reversed it, like what women, how we internalize a lot of the negative stuff that we're told and what society tells us and how women are treated. It was like, well, it wouldn't take having an extraordinarily large nose for a woman to think she's not worth hooking up with this hot guy. Um, it, 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 it took him a nose. Um, in our book, it takes BB just years of sort of being beaten down a little bit and internalizing a lot of negative stuff. Um, and that was what I wanted to explore was the idea of why we believe negative things about ourselves and what negative things we take in and that we shouldn't 
shock. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, like, at the end isn't like, and she was right. Um, <laughs> it, is, it is bad, we shouldn't do that. But I thought that was, that was something that really played on me. It's like, why was it the only thing he thought was wrong with him was this one specific thing? And I refused and they were very upset with me. And it's the one, I just, it's such an overused phrase, people looking for the one, it drives me mad. I don't know why it drives me so mad, but it just does. So one. that's never gonna be in there, yeah. Any other? Uh, loads that I can't think of at the moment. I mean, loads. loads. <laughs> well, the giggling, the adults giggling. giggling. I can't bear it. <laughs> 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 I giggle, adults don't giggle. Yeah. Lindsay, I, I also hate a giggler. I can't bear it. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a sweary person. I like Are you? Um, and I have, it has been politely suggested that I limit my uh, broad and wide and deep and vast knowledge of swears. <laughs> by, by powers that be. Okay. Um, and you know, I, I don't want anyone to ever feel uncomfortable reading it. So I, I, I leave one word out where I'm like, that upsets some people who often don't cast it. So I will leave that one out. It upsets Americans an awful lot. If I, it's an it's a interesting word um, that I can't. I can't use that one, ever. I don't know if I would, but I'd just like to have the option. Just see, mm. I thought you might say something like, in and of itself, which kind of doesn't mean that you've got to say that. No, I, 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 words are words, and I think they're all tools, and I love to play with language, and you never know what a character's going to say until they say it. You might have a horrible character that runs around and you're like, you know what? Yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'd be like, I'm like, Oh, no one wants that. <laughs> yeah, right? Nobody oh. wants that in a book, but I'm sure I've had a, an American character who said it isn't perfectly right. Maybe panty horse is the worst, though. No, no panty horse is panty horse. Panty horse is so it's weird. It's a child word for unpacking. It just makes me balk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind a knicker. No, I like it. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so anyway. What would I use? Yeah, but yeah. So what, what would yours be? I don't think I have one. I don't. Jane will laugh because Jane knows me really well. And she's always saying I'm like Pollyanna because I don't hate stuff, do I? <laughs> so she's going, no, you're so <laughs> <laughs> She literally is thinking that. Um, I don't hate stuff. I literally think put words in if you want. It's up to you.